Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study here at Abounding Grace. My name is Pastor Gabriel Dudley. On behalf of our our, our pastors, Pastor Walt, Pastor Page, and our overseers, Apostle and Prophet, um, uh, Apostle Harry Jones, Prophet Tori Jones, we, we welcome you. Uh, we have a great word this evening. And uh, before we get started, let's just magnify the Lord. Let's just exalt his name um, because we want the Lord to, to really speak tonight. So just go ahead and take a moment and let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. 
Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for who you are. We bless you for your grace. Thank you for watching over your word to perform it in each and every one of our lives, God, and imparting, God, your, your manifold wisdom that we may bear much fruit in Jesus' name. So welcome once again. Let me take a sip there. Welcome once again. So we started a new series this past Sunday. And uh, you want to check that out. Um, the uh, title was simply W-O-R-K, Time to Work. And um, it was very good. And um, work is actually an acronym that we're launching from, which is, is, stands for Working for Opportunities to Reveal the King. Working for Opportunities to Reveal the King. That's the acronym that, past that Pastor Walt gave us. And it's so um, 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 it's, it's so good because it because it encapsulates God's purpose for uh, work. And we also had homework. So you want to make sure that we all respond to it. So so what one thing that was given was to identify one thing that is not working in our lives. And then we either repair it or release it, repair it or throw it out. And, and, and that is so good from a practical standpoint. And from a, from a spiritual standpoint, uh, but check out that message and um, um, uh, be encouraged and be strengthened because the the uh, um, admonishment was to rise up and work. And it's it's, it's literally time to work. And so um, uh, get instruction on, on on working differently, but we'll continue um, uh, in this same vein. So uh, tonight, what we want to uh, particularly uh, deal with is. Why work? Why work? And our, our objective is just that simple. What is work and why do we need to work? Let me help you out. Work is God's idea, just like marriage is God's idea, which means I can have an opinion if I want to. But at the end of the day, God's opinion matters more than my own. So let's just let's just make that clear. God's opinion matters more than my own. So let me give you a uh, just a quick story real quick. Um, and um, uh, this is just so good. It's so straight and to the point, but it, it um, um, really communicates a very profound uh, message that's that's in line with what we're going to be dealing with tonight. So it, um, it reads after the great fire of 1666 that leveled London, the world's most famous architect, Christopher Wren, was commissioned to rebuild St. Paul's Cathedral. One day in 1671, Christopher Wren observed three bricklayers on a scaffold. One crouched, one half standing, and one standing tall, working very hard and fast. To the first bricklayer, Christopher Wren asked the question, what are you doing? To which the bricklayer replied, I'm a bricklayer. I'm working hard laying bricks. The second bricklayer responded, I'm a builder, I'm building a wall. But the third bricklayer, the most productive of the three and the future leader of the group, when asked the question, what are you doing? Replied with a gleam in his eye, I'm a cathedral builder. I'm building a great cathedral to the almighty. You see the three perspectives there concerning the work that one is doing. Each one is doing the same exact work, 
But the reason behind the work that they're doing is completely different across each of these brick layers. So why do we want to deal with why? Well, I firmly believe that if you, Chris, if, if, if you clarify the what, define a thing, and then clarify its purpose, then you know that you're on the right track. We should never start any endeavor without clarifying, one, what we're doing, defining it correctly, and then two, finding out why we're doing it. Never endeavor to do anything, especially working, without knowing why you're doing it. Because we're all here for a reason. We're here to solve a problem, to uh, meet a need, uh, because God saw to it that you be here. So the, the uh, statistics in terms of the probability of you being born is ridiculously high. It's like 400 trillion, you know, um, on the odds of, of you being born into this earth. Uh, I simply put, God literally chose you, specifically you, to be here. So there is a work and works that he's called each and every one of us to, and nobody is insignificant. Absolutely, positively, nobody. Which means your work, my work, our work is necessary, which is why the declaration came on Sunday. Hey, it's time to work. Well, hey, you may say, well, I've been working. Well, see, when God brings a word, he's 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 wanting to bring course correction to someone's life. So somebody listening, you may be working in a particular uh, a, a way or manner or going down a particular path. But God wants to get your attention to 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 um, 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 uh, cause you to recalibrate and 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 sync up. Uh, to do this correctly and to do this the right way. All of us need to recalibrate. See, when a rocket is going to the moon, it's not just a straight shot. Uh, guess what? There's resistance called gravity. So that rocket is always course correcting in order for it to hit its intended target. If we don't constantly course correct and address the why we do a thing and address how we're doing it, and address the what we're doing on a regular basis because he's the one who clarifies and purifies and brings order and direction to our lives. That's why the word says, uh, um, uh, Psalmist said, order my steps in your word because I can uh, step according to my word and then I can get off the path that God really intended for my life. So uh, that's, that's, that's why. Now, the current mindset when you hear work, what comes to mind? Let me tell you what comes to mind from a, um, because there's two perspectives. There's the human perspective. There's the, you know, the, the, the worldly perspective. And then there's the godly perspective. So the, uh, the first thing that comes to everybody's mind oftentimes is, um, well, something that's hard. It's, it's uh, something that nobody likes to do. Nobody likes to get involved with. Uh, but everybody likes to play. Everybody likes to vacation. I remember in a, uh, school, uh, grade school, elementary school, recess was beautiful to me. Loved it. Loved it. And, and in fact, when I hit middle school, because there's no more recess when you hit middle school, I felt empty. I didn't know what I was going to do all day. I'm like, so you're saying we're not going to go outside and play? My goodness. But the first thought that comes to mind from a human standpoint is, yes, I, 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 I get to put my work down and go play. I don't get to work anymore. Yes, there's this there's this kind of thought, this fallen thought of let's get away from work. Let's 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 go play and just enjoy ourselves and not have any obligations, not have any expectations, not have any demand placed on our lives. Let's go play and vacate and just have a, a wonderful time. We look forward to the weekend because the weekend means we no longer have to work. We look forward to 5 p.m. because that means I don't I no longer have to work. We look forward to those times when we're not working, not because you're looking to get some rest and vacate, but because you're trying to escape and leave work. This is the fallen thought regarding work. This is why we have to clarify the why. And 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 and, and uh, <laughs> the truth is vacating and taking a break is a part of work. You don't vacate to get away from work. You vacate to recharge to get back and do more work and better work in greater ways. So. There's never an absence of work. 
But there's this running away of work for a lot of reasons why the person is probably on the wrong path. They're, they're doing the wrong activities. They're doing it in the wrong way with the wrong purpose, with the wrong mindset, not the right perspective. They're, they're doing it and it's toilsome, it's hard, it's, 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 it's they just don't like it. Um, you know, we're working for a lot of different reasons that causes us to reject and disdain the term work. Let alone work hard. Oh, oh my goodness, I don't want both of those together. Uh, work. Uh, so, so, so when I say work, I want you to interpret that as this is a good thing. This is not only a good thing, but it's a God thing. Why is it a God thing? Well, Genesis 2 and 2 simply says, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Work was mentioned two times. So in the beginning, God started working. Working for six days. See, anything God does is a pattern that we ought to model. It, it reveals his nature and his character. Anytime God reveals his nature, especially when he does something, we should take a note and say, that's what I need to be about. See, God so loved the world that he gave. So now, what do I need to do? I need to love the world, not in terms of loving it, you know, apart from God or setting the world above God. But we should love and have compassion for those that that our heart goes out to such a degree that we are willing to give. See, giving is a part of work. Uh, OK, so we'll get to it. Uh, so so right there and even that particular word, melako, uh, in the Greek. It means occupation, business, service, workmanship. So this is what God was doing in the very, very beginning, which means there will never be a time where you, quote, don't have to work. See, retirement is not a concept in the Hebrew culture. It's literally not a concept. There's there's no theme or, you know, kind of. Um, um, uh, yeah, I guess theme is the word for retirement. It's, hey, I'm going to work and complete it until I, I, I leave this earth. That's the mindset. See, um, <clears throat> nothing is wrong with, quote, retiring from if we, you know, what we call regular um, work nine to five. And if you've retired, hey, thank you for your service at whatever endeavor that you were doing. Um, but that just simply means um, and, and some like to use this. Hey, you're not retiring. You're refiring. Um, you're you're just going on transitioning to do another um, uh, task or work uh, because everything we do is unto is unto the Lord. But there's never a time where we just say, hey, stop. I'm done. As long as there's breath in your lungs here on the earth, there's still work to do. And even Jesus said God has been working all the way up until this point. And he said at that time in, um, um, uh, in history, but it still applies at this time in history. So if God's working, we're working. Uh, now, work defined. Let's 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 define it real quick. In Hebrew, the word is abad, a b a d. This means to work, to till, to serve, and it also means huh, to worship God. Oh, you mean if I'm working, I'm worshiping God? Absolutely. Absolutely. See, Genesis 2 and 15 simply says, and God and, oh, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So before an instrument or note was played, God gave Adam a task to do. That um, dress, that word dress, the root is abad. So he, he, he said, he, I put you in the garden to serve, to work. To worship me. So that same word for dress it and keep it is the same word for work, which we just revealed that it's a part of my worship unto God. So if I'm gardening, Adam was worshiping God when he put his hand to the plow. Isn't that something? See, there's a uh, album years ago by by a group, group called the Katinas and they have and, and they recorded an album called uh, Lifestyle, Worship Experience. And towards the end of it, um, he said that, that uh, worship is not reduced to uh, a style of music. He said, worship is a lifestyle. So what should that, how should that uh, uh, be interpreted in our context? 
work is your worship to God. See, work in the totality of the word. Everything we do in life is considered work. If, as long as there's life, there is work. You may want to write that one down. Where there's life, there's work. See, God is a God of life, so he started this whole thing working, which means to us that if you see no life, then you must ask the question, what work is not being done? If there's no, no life, then somewhere, somewhere around the uh, place, work is not being done. If something is broken, somewhere around the way, uh, work is not being done, which means life is not flowing, which means my, my worship unto God is not complete here. That's the Hebrew. And uh, and and um, uh, we'll get the Greek. But let me give you another one here. Um, uh, now, Exodus 20 and nine. This is that Hebrew. Just another scripture reference, just so that you can reference these. This is Bible study. So we like to pull out scriptures in Bible study. Uh, Exodus 20 and nine says six days thou shalt labor. That's the same word for Abad and do all thy work. Same word. So in the Greek, it is. Ergon, E-R-G-O-N, Ergon, and it means business, employment, that which anyone is occupied, that which one undertakes to do, an enterprise, an undertaking, any product, whatever, anything accomplished by hand, art, industry, or mind. So that encapsulates every single activity that we do in this life. That is work. But there's two sides to this, and, and we'll get to it. Now, let me define this in the English. Work is simply the exertion of effort directed to produce something. The exertion of effort directed to produce something. Key words here, the exertion of effort. I got to do something. I got to put forth effort. No coach ever got on a player that put forth their best effort. But the coach, sure enough, if he's a good coach, will rain on their parade if that player is given a half effort. My, my uh, father likes to say, um, don't half step it. Especially in situations where you know they can do more. That's when a coach really, really gets on you to hold you accountable. And it says, exertional effort directed. Very key word, directed. Your work must be going somewhere. Not activity for the sake of activity, but what is it leading to? Because the ultimate purpose here is to produce. So when God says, hey, I want you to work. I want you to till. I want you to produce something. Now, see, the fall happened, but God didn't change his mind. See, because God gave a different command in, in the context of, 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 of um, uh, the fall because there's resistance now. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, take dominion. See, there's always resistance to anything God wants. This is why culturally we resist work because God wants work, but work done right. There's always resistance to anything God wants. Let's settle it right now. There's always resistance. But, but he gives a command that says, be fruitful in spite of the resistance. Multiply in spite of the resistance. Subdue. In other words, step to the resistance. Take dominion. In, 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 in other words, tell the resistance to move out the way. And complete the work that which I called you to. So anything God wants us to do, he already equips us to do it. He first does that by speaking a blessing over our lives, over our worlds. Once he releases something out of his mouth, he can't take it back. And encapsulated in a word of God is the power to carry that out for ourselves. Hallelujah. Oops, I just hit that mic. <laughs> Glory. So what does that mean? Work is the catalyst that enables life to flow. It's the catalyst that enables life to flow. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
In other words, if, if you want to see something new spring up, if you want to see something um, uh, new, uh, something improve, something um, old become new, well, I, I have to be about that work. I have to be about that business. But what's, what, what, what's, what's the right kind of business that I need to be about? Because work is a neutral term, just like money is a neutral term. I can give money to someone with good intent and give money to someone with evil intent and get two completely different results from that neutral thing called money. Same thing with work. All of us have a mandate to work because if we stop, stop working and those of us who know who, who um, um, even have been athletes, when you stop exerting in that kind of way, running and lifting and, you know, moving, uh, your body starts to you know, break down, if you will. Um, if, if you stop and slow down, if there's no work, death starts to work. If life's not working, death is working. If life is not at work, death is at work. That's why as believers, because it's a message to believers. Uh, but if you're an unbeliever, hear, hear God and we invite you into the family of the Lord. Um, see, as believers, we should never stop. Because the moment we stop, then death is going to work in that area. The moment we stop speaking the word, the moment we stop praying, the moment we, we stop controlling our atmospheres, stop commanding our mornings, the moment we stop pursuing God, that very moment, death is at work. Because Jesus said, listen, Satan desires to have you and sift you as wheat. Like, uh, you know, um, God even told Cain, listen, sin is knocking at the, sin is right there at the door. There's an adversary that wants us to do the direct opposite of what God intends. So I entertain a fallen thought from the enemy if I'm running to the opportunity to not work. If I'm running to the opportunity to do nothing, to just sit around and do nothing all day. I'm not talking about those times when you rest and you need to pull back. You know, my father says, um, uh, 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 if you don't lay it down, it'll uh, uh, get laid down for you or something like that. <laughs> um, and, and in other words, you can only go so long and so far until you hit a brick wall and you have to lay down. So uh, lay down before you get pushed down. But, um, but this is so important and so necessary that we understand that work is a good thing, not a bad thing. Man by the name of Miles Monroe made this statement, which I believe is very, very true. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. If I don't know the, know the purpose of work, I will abuse work. In other words, what does that look like in terms of abusing work? You're doing something that is not in, uh, um, that God didn't intend, period. The way I'm doing life, I'm, I'm, I'm bearing fruit that God did not intend to be bored. Well, purpose is not known. Abuse is inevitable. So take a, 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 a apple, for example, an apple and a nail. <coughs> Excuse me. An apple and a nail, meaning like a nail hammer nail. And you put the nail on a piece of two by four plywood and you take the apple and you try to nail that nail in the apple. Anyone who's ever nailed a nail into a two by four it takes a lot of effort and force. And a apple is nowhere near hard enough, enough to nail a nail into wood. What will happen to that apple? That apple will begin to be abused and punctured and just get utterly destroyed because I'm misusing its purpose. An apple is intended for me to eat not to use to hammer a nail. So as a result, when I don't know the purpose of an apple, I begin to now abuse it. But when I understand the purpose of work, I will now have more clarity and more direction in my life. And I will have more fulfillment, that's the key word, because we just came off of fulfillment, with the work that we do. Work will no longer become this humdrum, arduous thing, but it will become a joy. See, Jesus being here, yes, he went to the cross and sweated blood. It was a serious thing. 
But the Bible says the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. The joy that was set before him, he endured the work that was required. Because he worked for a higher purpose. Write this down. You have to work for a higher purpose. Take your why higher. Take your reason higher. Well, all I'm doing is just, um, um, I'm just a waitress for a restaurant. Or, or all I do is clean, you know, floors. Or all I do, I'm just a cook. Mm-mm. Go back to the bricklayer example. Go back to the bricklayer example. Because every, every, every ounce of time that you have in this life is a gift from God. And our pursuit is, God, what, God, what, what have you bestowed upon this day that I am to do that will give praise and glory and honor to you? And moreover, cause men to see the good works and then they glorify you. And moreover, your goodness bringing them to repentance. Oh, my goodness. Right there. I just encapsulated the whole reason for work. But we'll get to that. <laughs> Miles Monroe also said he gave this uh, this 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 comparison between work and a job. See, a job is what you do. And we know that you know, to make money. You know, we call it a nine to five sometimes or or whatever it is. That's that's a job. Hey, I go to you know, my job and then I come home. When I'm home, I'm not doing my job. Some of us anyway. Um, but then he said work. Your work is lifelong. Your job is temporary. Your jobs may change, but your work remains. Your job may change, but your work remains, which means I can take you and put you in any situation. And you will still be able to execute the work that you've been called to. In other words, you are who you are, wherever you are. And if I know that, I will not be so concerned about not necessarily the type of work I'm doing, but the kind of fruit I'm bearing. But the 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 ultimate goal as to why I'm working. See, a, a person who has that mindset, they're willing to do the non glamorous task. They're willing to work behind the scenes when nobody is looking. They're willing to do those things that simply. I, I, I like to call it roll up to the ultimate goal and chief aim. They're willing to do that simply because they changed their perspective. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 10. Love this scripture. It's in the Amplified Ephesians 2 and 10. And it simply reads, for we, you and me, are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them. Living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Very powerful scripture. Right there encapsulates God's purpose for work. And, and it, it, it defines the kind of work that we ought to be about. It said good works. So if there's a such thing as good works, there's a such thing as bad works. Good works, which he predestined, planned beforehand, taking paths, which he prearranged ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. I said this before, work is neutral. Work is neutral. We can produce good fruit or bad fruit. God's intent for us when we work is that we produce good fruit. Good works, not bad works. These are these are, you know, uh, 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 works plural that you and I have been called to complete. So so that works takes care of everything that you do in life. The singular work. And I'll give you a scripture reference, John 17 and four, uh, where Jesus said, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I'm going to read that one again. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. If you want to glorify God, 
you must finish the work that he sent you here to do. Keyword sent. See, you, didn't, you, you just didn't pop up here. You were sent here by divine appointment from God. Sent here, kind of like Star Trek in, you know, back in the day where they would get beamed, you know, to a place. You, you were beamed from heaven to accomplish a task. I, um, a um, scene comes to mind in a more recent Star Trek film where a planet was um, crumbling and uh, there was a black hole that was created and, and the planet was crumbling. And the people on this planet, there was a person on the Starship Enterprise that his family and uh, people in um, his um, uh, uh, planet were on the planet. And he was feeling some type of way like, whoa, whoa. The planet is crumbling, but my family is there and other key people uh, for, for my people are there. So he goes and, and mind you, he's, you know, have millions of miles away or what have you. But he goes to the beam portal thingy, Majiggy, steps on it and gets beamed to the planet. And he's able to save almost everyone from that planet. That's, that's, that's exactly what God did with Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Savior. So he beamed him down that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is not his will that anybody should, um, uh, 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 um, should, should fall, that, that anybody should live in death. But his, his will is that everybody be saved. Everybody be saved. So keep that in mind. When you are working, that particular single work, because that should be your pursuit. God, what is the work singular that you've called me to? We like to call that sometimes a mission statement, but it's that one thing. See, Jesus came to save that which was lost. Seek and save that whoever's lost. I'm going to save you. He's a, he's a Messiah. That encapsulating singular thought, if you will, that's your work. What is it that you do? What do you bring to the table? If you don't know, start pursuing that. Because the, the clearer you get, then the sooner you will become in alignment with God's plan and path for your life. And you will start bearing good works, bearing good fruit. But that plural works, that which one undertakes, whatever it is. Whatever it is, I, I like to say it like this. Bring whatever you do under the framework of the kingdom of God. So Matthew 16, uh, 6, 6.33 says, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. See, what's the kingdom? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. See, his righteousness in the Amplified is his way of doing and being right. That looks like works to me. In other words, there isn't a such thing as church clothes. What do I mean by church clothes? See, when we would come up, you know, we would, uh, the only time we, we would pretty much get dressed up in the week is when we would go to church. They were called church clothes. And then we would have, you know, I'm dating myself a little bit, penny loafers on, you know, the loafers where you put the pennies in there, and then you see the white socks, um, uh, 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 church shoes and, and or, or even black socks, church socks. This is my, you know, uh, Easter outfit or what have you. Resurrection Sunday outfit. We would separate and say, hey, this is for church. And, and, and we would always interpret churches. This is for God. This is this is his time. So I put on my church clothes and then, bam, I go to. Church, but what happens when you take off your church clothes? Well, I just go and do whatever. See, that one day a week, I'm, I'm, you know, focused on doing some good works. But then I take off my church clothes, and now I'm just going to do work. See, there's good works, and then there's work. See, that, that mindset can creep into our lives where we don't allow the framework of the kingdom to permeate every domain and sphere every ounce and entity of anything that matters within our lives. The question that you always want to ask is what does God say about it? 
In every situation, God has an answer. God has a word for it. That person is allowing the framework of the kingdom to drive their decisions. See, what is a framework? It is a driver of your decisions. It is the cornerstone of your decisions, which means if I make a decision, it's in the context of honoring God. If I make a decision, it's in the context of glorifying God. If I do work, it's in the context of, 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 of making his praise glorious, bringing his, bringing his fame up, uh, making it known that he is my God, he is my source, that he is my leader, he is my coach, he is my teacher, he is my everything. So that whatever work we do, it stays on the path of good works. Because there's a path by which good works are materialized. And there's a path by which bad works are materialized. And the enemy would love for us to bear his fruit. That foul, nasty, stinky, going nowhere fruit. But God, his intent is that we bear the most succulent, wonderful, eternal, uh, edifying fruit. Because the last thing your adversary wants is for good fruit to be bore because the potency of the kingdom doesn't just bless one, but it blesses more than one. The kingdom of God has a multiplying effect that if I say or do something that is in line with the will, plan and purposes of God, it now affects, yes, my life, but anybody that I'm connected to. Everybody else is better because he made me better. Everybody else comes up because he brought me up. Oh, your adversary doesn't like that. So your aim, our aim is to be about good works. Let's reiterate this again in Matthew uh, 5 and 16. It simply says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. This is why the enemy does not want you to be about good works. Now, let me uh, give a, um, a caveat here <clears throat> regarding works. We are saved by faith through grace. Saved. Saved by grace through faith. Meaning there's nothing you can do to tally up your entry or ticket into eternity with the most high. Jesus took care of that. He, 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 he made a way for us to go to the father, to be reconciled back to God by putting our faith and trust in him. Through faith alone are we saved, not works. So our aim isn't to do good deeds that we may earn God's approval. God already approves of you. God already loves you completely, meaning all of his agape love, all of it. He said, I love you. See, my Bible says it like this. While I was yet in my sin, Christ died. In other words, he doesn't love a righteous person more than a sinful person less. He said, while you were sin, while we were sinners, he loved us. So his love is absolute. But we want to make that distinction so that we're not doing things to earn approval from God. Don't do that. See, we, we work because we love God. Ah, we'll get to that point. See, my wife, I willingly do good works that benefit her because I love her. Not because I'm trying to earn her love. Because if I don't do another thing, she already loves me. So I may be trying to do things to earn that approval, but, you know, I know her. She'll be like, hey, it's good. It's cool. Like, hey, we good. But if I say I love, there has to be corresponding action. See, God started working because he got his love, which means love is a verb which means love has to give. Agape love is looking to give. 
the very purity of love means that I have to give this. Like, this, like that person recognizing or God recognizing that he has something that's beneficial. I've got to give this. So we work because first we love God. Freely you receive, freely you give. That's, that's from a pure source, a pure motive. I'm not trying to earn a man's favor, not trying to earn God's favor, but I simply want to heed his instruction. Simply want to walk his way, go down his path. And as a thank you, I'll be about good works that he preordained and predestined for me to do. And at the end, I give all praise and glory and honor to God. There is a thing that, that you know, uh, people try to do. They try to do something and then give praise and glory and honor to God. But the first response that we should have is, God, what pleases you? Then I do it. See, that's what happens when we do something and then we say, hey, I like to think, give glory and honor to God. But the very thing that you did contradicts the, the word of God. Like that wasn't good. But hey, I, I still give glory and honor to God because I'm thanking God because I did work. It wasn't a good work, but I got financial benefit. People know my name. I've, you know, ascended to the mountain. Let me give glory and honor to God. See, there is an offering that God will not receive. God receives the offering by which he sets the criteria and standard for it, which means there's good works and bad works, which means there's a good offering and a bad offering. Our pursuit is to please him. Faith pleases God. So God, by faith, order my steps in your word. By faith, order my conversation aright. By faith, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. By faith, in my pursuit of him, now the works of getting into the word, the works of sitting with him and supping with him, fellowshipping with him, the works of applying the word of God to my life, the works of getting understanding to this word, the, the works of coming to quote unquote church or, 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 or gathering to um, receive from the word of God or logging on to hear what God is saying. This is all so that we can be very clear and, and continuously be on a path of making sure that the works that we're doing are good works, that the fruit that we're bearing is good fruit. Because this is why we are here. Intent, God's intent reiterated another way. Titus 3 and 8 says, this is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. God wants men to profit from the good works that he ordained you and me to do in this life. God wants men. See, the works aren't for God. The works brings glory to God. The works causes men to see and say, wow, that's amazing. See, anything that's excellent, anything that's just absolutely awe-inspiring gets a man's attention. Anything good from God gets a man's attention. And God gets your attention that you may now, uh, that somebody may say, hey, you see that? That reflects God. And then that person, because of that good thing that they see, they're drawn to it. Let your light shine so men may see your good works and glorify. They may see it and now glorify God. That's why we can't take glory for ourselves. The Bible says all that's good and perfect comes from him. So if it's a good work that comes out of something I do and my pursuit was for him and I got into the word of God and I purposely intended to take my activity and let it go through the framework of the kingdom of God. I'm now bearing good fruit, good works, because there are times we, we may miss the mark. But thank God, 
that he's faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Because if I do something that bears a result that God didn't intend, God forgive me. He says, all right, I'll take it, throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Let's keep going because there's more work to do. Because what happens is sin causes you to stop, causes you to draw back, causes you to stop working good works. Sin. You know, Cain wanted to go, you know, hide and do something else, you know, because because, you know, that sin caused him to 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 repel from God. You know, Adam and Eve wanted to go hide and do something else because that sin caused him to repel from God. And and God is like, my will for you was not to, uh, you know, run from me. Come to me so that I can show you great and mighty things that you know not. So that through your hands, you can do great and mighty exploits because I'm empowering you to do it. But his purpose here is that men will profit from the good that God is causing to happen through your life. Which is why it's we don't turn into a cliche to say, well, God did it. God did it. God did it. No, no. Be real about that. Don't take glory. Give it to God. So that when you turn around, men are looking up and not looking at you. Because if I give it to God and say, God, you, that causes me to look up and say, oh, so. So, God, you did this. God, you're about this life. God, you caused this to happen. God, you you cause that restoration between a mother and a, a, a son, a mother and a daughter, a father and a son, a, a father and his daughter. God, you cause that restoration there. God, you God, you you you're the one who has uh, 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 caused this marriage to be together for 40 plus years. God, you're the one who 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 kept us through the pandemic, who, you know, uh, 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 who repelled sickness and disease away from the midst of us. Not not putting down anyone who has you know, lost you know, life, uh, but 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 we still we put our faith and trust in him because he's he's the God that heals us. He's the God that heals us. And 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 we stay with that. But that men might see. The goodness of God and not only glorify him. But then come to him. And repent and they get on their good works path. And then the cycle just keeps repeating and repeating itself. Till all have heard. Till, till all have had the opportunity to come to him. Because this gospel must be preached throughout the four corners of the world. Every creed, nationality, every man needs to have that opportunity to choose life, to choose Jesus. Because it's not his will that death work in our lives. It's his will that life works in our lives. So when we be about good works, we partner with life. When we do the opposite, we partner with death. We don't want you to partner with death working. There is an unseen world. And, and uh, there's, there's, there's the uh, winning side and there's the losing side. The winning side is cheering you on and saying, yes, Keep seeking God, keep praying, keep sowing, keep giving, giving money, giving time, giving your resources. You keep blessing people. Keep keep seeking God for the day, <coughs> the month, the year. Keep keep uh, um, um, uh, fasting or, you know, keep visiting the fatherless, keep visiting the widows, keep uh, taking care uh, um, and giving to the poor. See, I'm, I'm, I'm giving examples of works. Keep keep do, doing those things that please God. Keep keep uh, 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 speaking over your family. Keep um, uh, uh, the word before your eyes. Keep it in your mouths. These are all good works. Husbands, keep loving your wives as Christ would love. As Christ loves the church. You, you, you honor your father or your mother. These are all good works. But how do I find out those good works? What are those ex examples? That's that's the purpose of getting into that word. That I may take it, hide it in my heart, that it may bleed over and out of my pores. That I can't help but to do good, 
good works because I'm in constant fellowship with him. That's why Jesus said, listen, get in me. Get in me and I in you ask what you will, because he says that's a person. That is looking to do good works, that is looking to glorify God, that is looking to make sure that his praise is made glorious. I can give whatever that person asks because they're asking from a pure source. They're asking with the right motives, with the, with the right why. Go back to the bricklayer. <coughs> and, 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 and if you had, let's just say they're low on budget. Low on budget and um, things slowed up. And you have a $10 million check to finish that cathedral. But you need it done in a certain amount of time, else you lose all that money. Which person are you going to give it to? You're going to give it to the one who just says, hey, I'm just laying bricks. Or the one that just says, hey, I'm building a wall. I'm building a wall. Or that one that says, I'm building a th cathedral. I'm restoring that which was torn down because this is a temple of the almighty God. And every brick that I lay is a brick towards that ultimate goal to build this, that his praise will be made glorious. Who are you going to write a check to? I take it right on out. Here you go, brother. Build that temple for God. You see, vision speaks, but not my vision. Vision attracts. See, that why is the vision. Why are we working, God? Why are we doing this, God? And once he clarifies that, hold on to it. Hold fast to your confession of faith, because that becomes your confession. That God, you said it, so I'll speak it. You spoke it, I'll speak it. And this is what we'll be about. This is the work that we'll be about. That your praise will be made glorious, not our name. If we get big, cool, great, glory to God. If we stay small but still impactful, glory to God. At the end of the day, it's the fruit of the work that matters. What fruit are we born? Because if you impact one life, that's better than impacting no life. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You miss 100% of the swings you don't take. You will never hit a home run if you don't swing. But we have a reason to keep swinging. We have a reason to keep shooting. You can brick a thousand times. It doesn't matter. Because I do this as unto the Lord. And if it's unto the Lord, he's a good teacher, good instructor. He'll tell you where to make the adjustment that you may do it better. Hey, try it again. Do it again. Do it again. Okay, okay. You missed the mark. You didn't do it right. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, try it again. Because he wants you to be about the good works. Be about the good works. The enemy would love for us to get down on ourselves. Just say, man, I, I just can't seem to do any Like, that, you know, that, that, that uh, Charlie Brown thing. Can't seem to do anything right. I'm always messing up. I'm always doing this, doing that. That's why <laughs> Jesus said a helper. To help us in this thing. We can't do it alone and by ourselves. So our, 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 our inquiry is, God, what help have you provided that I may be about good works? If you preordain and predestined to me to be about good works, then God, help me with this. Help me with this, God. Work, I said it before, it's a demonstration of love. It's a demonstration of love. That's, that's, that's one of our cornerstone motives because man, he first loved me. So as an act of my love, I do. See, Jesus told uh, Peter, asked the question in uh, John 12 and 17, he said, do you love me? He said, feed my sheep. What was he saying? If you love, you will do. If you love, you will work. If you love, you will work. In other words, you're not looking for the opportunity to escape work. You, you actually have to be told to stop because his love has been shed abroad so much in your heart that you just have to give 
If it's just one, if it's just one that comes to the knowledge, if it's just one that takes up that, that takes this word and runs with it. If it's just one, because that one can turn into a thousand. And that one can turn into two. And then now you got 10,000 that can receive the benefit of a good work towards one. But if I love, I must do. We were commanded to love, which means my love is not a verbal profession. My love is not a verbal profession. Love must be confirmed and demonstrated, which means if I love, I do. If I love, I work. If I say I love God, I will work the way he has ordained for me to work. I work based on his standard, based on his pattern. If I say I love God, I worship. Remember, work is worship according to his pattern. <laughs> First John 3 and 18, Amplified, says, little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth. In the Amplified, it says, in practice and sincerity. So the practice of good works is a reflection of my love for him. Mm. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, he says, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. You see that? Stir up love and good works. Why stir up love first? Because it must be your good works must come from the love of God, it must come from a place of love because we can do something that's good. That's not God. Do something good because we're trying to earn and gain and rack up some favors for later on down the line. Uh -huh. There, there is a, a such thing as a person that's doing all this good, doing all this good because they're making sure just in case there'll come a time where I need to ask something of you. That's not the way we work. We don't give with an intent to get something later on from this person. We don't give with an intent to get something later on from God. Uh, uh, let me tell you the truth. God is smarter than you. God can pick that up in a, in a, in a second, just like a, just like, just like a kid can pick up fakeness in a second. Hebrews, that same verse in the Amplified 24 and tw uh, 10, 24 and 25. He said, let us consider and give attention, continuous care, watching over one another, studying how we may stir up, stimulate and incite to love and helpful deeds and noble activities, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together, just like we're doing now as believers. As you know, is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning and urging, encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching, encouraging each other to be about the good works. See, whenever we encourage you to forgive someone who wronged you, we're encouraging you unto good works. Whenever we encourage you to tie before the God, to commit your children to God, to commit your car, your house, to commit your job to the Lord. We're stirring you up to good works. All of these are activities that are good things. Mary and Martha, there's, there's a thing that's called busyness. And hey, that's, that's okay. But then there's a good part. There's a good work. You know, um, Mary, I believe, was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha was busy trying to do for Jesus. But the key point there is that there's a good work. There's a work, but there's a good work. That's our pursuit. God, clarify for me what my good work is and lead me in the paths of righteousness on a daily basis that I may do when I do life, that I'm about good works in every area of my life. Be angry and sin not. That's a good work. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That's a good work. See, these are scriptures. These are things within the word of God that we ought to take to heart. So that when a response is needed, you have a reservoir to pull from 
a reservoir of his word to pull from and say, I'm going to respond this way. But if I have no word, it will be hard for me to be about good works, to be about bearing a good fruit with a good outcome. So as we start to wrap up, don't lose sight of the why. Don't lose sight of why you and I should be working. That, that praise, glory, and honor would go to him. That men would see <coughs> your good works and glorify, not you, but him. That men would come to repentance because of the goodness of the Lord that's being demonstrated by those who made, made a decision to say, God, I'm going to walk your good works path. Because if you lose sight of the why, work becomes duty. Arduous, hard, unfulfilling. Anybody ever felt like that? Even if you feel like that now. I challenge you, when you go to work on Tuesday, because a lot of us are off on tomorrow, ask God for a different perspective, a fresh vision as to why you are working. And he will open your mind up to the point where the thing that you're doing that seems so, uh, uh, meh. God will shift that perspective and you now start working for a higher why, a higher purpose. Because when you work higher, you're willing to do those things that aren't glamorous. You're not going to get a medal. And some might, some might, not, might not even see it, but God does. My Bible says, what you do in secret, God will reward openly that men will see the goodness of God and then glorify him. If you lose sight of why, work is a weight. It's heavy. Ah, it's heavy. But Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Because that chief aim, that ultimate goal, man, this is, this is light work compared to the glory that shall be revealed in your life compared to the glory that shall be revealed in this family, compared to the glory that shall be revealed over here, over there, in your life, their life, their life. Hallelujah. If you lose sight of the why, it's, it's directionless. If you, if you lose sight of the why, it's directionless. You, you're just doing things, doing things. To what end? Because there's a such thing as working on a thing, which is what Pastor Walt said, got to be working on something, working on the right things, working in the right way. But I'll add also to that, we must be working towards a thing. Working on the thing, but working towards it at the very same time. What are we working towards? Ask God. I'm going to leave you with this. Colossians 3 and 23, in the Amplified, it simply says, whatever may be your task, work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men. Take that to heart. Apply that to your life. Make this your prayer. Ask the Father, what is the work you've given me to do? Work singular that you've given me to do. The work that you've called me to do. Then ask him, stir me unto the work you've given me. Because if he doesn't stir, if he doesn't provoke, that's another word for stir. If he doesn't quicken your spirit, your soul to do a thing, it's not going to yield a God result. Because it's by his spirit. Not by my might, not by my power, not by man's resources, but his spirit leading and guiding. It takes the spirit of God. Also ask the father. Purify my works. So this is the plural. Purify my works, meaning the way I do life. Purify my works and clarify what that looks like, God. 
That's why we connect to a man or woman of God. That's why we connect to a ministry to further get instruction as to what the good path, the good works path looks like and then go down that path and continue to get meat, apply it to our lives, make those course corrections that we may go back out and do good works. That we may go back out and fulfill the very plan of God for our lives. See, it, it, it makes something as coming to church worthwhile. Because I'm not coming to church because it's Sunday. I'm not logging on because it's Wednesday. But there's a higher why that I'm moving towards, that I'm working towards. And there is something that I need to add to my faith. So I'll be consistent and keep feeding and keep, and keep eating and getting the very bread of life. The daily bread, as, as Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread, that we may be more effective on, on our good works paths that he prearranged, predestined, and made ready for us to take. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Remember, it's not about so much the activity itself, but our vocational activities brings, uh, causes resources to come into our hands so that if God puts it in our heart, it can be manifested. Um, athletes, um, they often start off, you know, rookies and, 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 you know, young and eyes wide open. Wow, it's a lot of money. Um, all of those kinds of things. And let's just use basketball, for example, come into a lot of money, come into a lot of things. And either during their career or even at the end of their career, they, they parlay all of those resources that they've gained. And now they're putting those resources into things that are near and dear to their hearts. And for those who do it right, they connected with a work that God intended them to be about. And they're, you know, kind of a, a job, if you will, um, put resources into their hands to be about the real work. Where you say, well, my purpose is to play basketball. My purpose is to cook. Eh, no, that's a byproduct. You know, if you're good at building cars or fixing cars, if you're good at singing, you use those to the praise of his glory. We use those as a, the infrastructure that we may bore bear good works to the praise of his glory. That's the whole purpose of it. So your pursuit is not in making more money to make more money or do good work to make more money, but I do good work and provide more value. And then yes, I get paid for that value, but I turn around and say, God, what would you have me to do with this? And you know what he's going to say, I got some good works for you to do with that. But God, I want to travel and go on vacation. Yeah, do that. But then when you come back, I, got, I still got good works for you to do. Because I blessed you to be a blessing. I've been good to you that you may turn around and be good to someone else. This is why we work. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to your word. God, we thank you for clarifying within each and every one of us why we ought to work. Why work is a good thing and, and, and your purpose for it, God. God, we thank you for purifying our motives, purifying our hearts, creating in us clean hearts, renewing, renewing within us right spirits that we may worship you by your standards in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for your patience with us and your mercies. Teach us what we do not know. Reveal to us what we do not know and have not seen. That God, we may bear much fruit because we are actively partnering with you to do good works. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you haven't given your life to, to the Lord, we invite you to do that. Men are searching. You know, 
There was a time where we were searching, where I was searching, where you know, those who are watching, they may be believers, they were searching you know, for that right path. There's only one way, and Jesus is the way. So if you heard something that, that pricked your heart, that, um, uh, that caused you to want to make a change, I, I stir you up, and I say, come on, make a fresh start. Even if you've given your life to Christ, and you've kind of slowed down, you stopped working. You've, you know, were kind of living on your own time and on your own accord, but you want to get right with God and want to get clear and purposeful with God. I invite you to say this as well. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you acknowledging that you are Lord. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins, wash them in your blood, make me new, lead me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. I accept you as savior. I believe you died on the cross and rose on the third day that I, that I may be saved. Thank you for welcoming me into your family. Help me as I go from this point forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, it's the starting point. Everybody starts somewhere. But make a decision to put one foot in front of the other and to seek first God. Get connected with a ministry. You can even start with us. We have a resource uh, for you. It is the uh, New Life Kickstarter uh, that'll get you started and uh, show you some things that you need uh, for your walk and for your path. We just want to aid you and, you know, be one of those aids along your path uh, because there's other resources that you can gain as well. But, hey, this is a great starting point. Um, but, we, but we want you to connect with a, a, a good uh, spirit-filled Bible-believing teaching ministry and, um, 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 and get around believers that your strength may be, um, your strength, your faith may be strengthened. Um, it's very necessary. It's very important. Um, it, it, um, uh, so so uh, take that uh, Kickstarter, agfwc.org slash new life, and uh, to get you started, and, and um, we'll uh, reach out to you as well. Hallelujah. So we pray that you receive something this evening that you can apply to your life immediately. And um, like I said before, check out Sunday's message uh, because we're building um, uh, so, we'll, so we're going to be continuing with work, um, the, the theme of work, and I want to say it again, working for opportunities to reveal the king. Isn't that what we just taught tonight? Working for opportunities to reveal the king. Work. Hallelujah. Let's do, some, let's do a good work and give unto the Lord our God. Hallelujah. It is a privilege to give. Um, because if you don't have and you want to give, that's not a good feeling. And, um, um, but it's always a good, uh, a good thing to give unto the Lord uh, because it, it's been said that we can't outgive God. The principle still applies. Our motive for giving is to honor God, but God makes sure that you and I um, are supplied in return that we may continue to give again. That is his will. Let, let, let me read this uh, uh, for you. Uh, this is our foundational uh, scripture, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, but I'm going to read 9 and 10 as well. Uh, so 2 Corinthians 9 and, 8, 9 and 8 in the Amplified, it says, And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance, for every good work, there's that word again, and charitable donation. As it is written, he, the benevolent person, scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on and endure forever. Sounds like good works to me. And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. Simply because that person made a decision to get on God's good work path and get his heart and, and live with an open hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We, we have a few ways that you can give. 
you can um, uh, text. Uh, well, you can see it on the uh, screen there. Um, I haven't committed it to memory just yet because we recently uh, changed it, but you'll see it there right on the screen. And you can also visit our website. You can go to agfwc.org, AGFWC and there's a Give tab right in the top right there, and uh, you can uh, sow that way as well, or you can mail us. And you see the address there that you can mail us. So let's go ahead and speak this over our, our seed, uh, because God remembers all of your seeds and your offerings, and we want to remember uh, our tithes. Um, so your tithe is not your offering. Your tithe is, is God's portion. That's a tenth of your income. Um, gross is what, we, is, is what we endeavor to pay off of uh, because Uncle Sam takes, takes theirs, um, but God gets his first. Uncle Sam takes ta taxes off the gross, but God gets his uh, first. So remember your tithes. Um, that's very important because anything you commit to God, uh, God is uh, seeing to it that you are uh, supplied and taken care of. We'll go ahead and confess this right now. As we release tonight's seed, we are believing you for jobs and better jobs, prospering businesses, vehicles and better vehicles, raises and bonuses, benefits, signed contracts, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. See, all of those things that we just mentioned, that's, that's so that you can be about good works, not to make your pockets fat. There, if, if you have a purpose for the resources, God can get it to you without limit. Ah, hallelujah. If you have a godly purpose for it, God will get it to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So just take a few moments and watch this announcements video. Um, we want to uh, just make you aware of a few things that we have upcoming. We're assembling in person as well as online Sunday, July 18th at 10 a.m. at the Hilton Wilmington Christiana. We're inviting you and your family to join us as we encounter the more of his presence together. No registration is necessary. For more information, call 610-566-0457. We look forward to seeing you there. Be in prayer as Prophet Doreen ministers at the Dunamis Conference in Bristol, Virginia with host Prophet Jonathan McGee. July 30th and 31st will feature equipping and prophetic training throughout the weekend. For more information and to register, visit dunamisequippingva.eventbrite.com. We are transforming lives by the grace of God. We're inviting you to connect and spread the knowledge of the Son of God wherever you go online by liking our page on Facebook, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and sharing the content. If you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary this month of July, we want you to know your abounding grace family declares the fulfillment of the Lord be in your lives this month. Enjoy! Listening to our podcast allows the Word of God to continually speak and help you work according to His purpose. Simply search Abounding Grace Family Worship Center on your platform of choice and subscribe today. So we will be gathering on the 18th of July. Uh, so uh, come worship with us if you're, you know, if you're local. We'll also be streaming as well. Um, so, um, uh, but we expect a good time in, in the Lord. It's always good for brethren to gather together in unity and we will be gathering more, um, um, obviously because um, the restrictions have uh, you know, been lifted. So, uh, but, um, but stay tuned to more information in regards to that. And don't forget to uh, you know, sign up for our podcast and, 
and uh, uh, track with us on our YouTube channels, the KWI, as you saw in the announcements, and as well as the Mountain Grace. Um, and thank you for every seed sown, you know, everything that you, you know, uh, 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 sow into the ministry, even if it's not financial, you know, you, you sharing is a seed. Uh, so, so thank everyone uh, for that. So, don't forget, take to heart Colossians 3 and 23 in the Amplified. I'm going to read it one more time and then we'll dismiss. Whatever may be your task, work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. Go in the grace of the Lord Jesus. Have a great evening. Majesty. Majesty.